Hey guys! It's been a very long time since I've done a tutorial. I've just been doing everything else, but I remembered that I like teaching and I like being helpful and just having a good time doing that stuff. So, um, I'm not going to be doing a fire alpaca tutorial, of course. However, this, oops, this tutorial can be used with pretty much any art program you use. And so it's going to be about lineless art. To those of you who don't really remember what line or don't know what lineless art, it's when um, it's like an art style that has very limited line work. I have an example. Um, this one. See, this is lineless work. There's like some lines with the facial features and with the clothing, but it's very limited. You can see there's no outside line and no line separating the hair from the skin and all that cool stuff. So. That's what I want to go on about. That's I don't have that much experience in lineless work, but I thought it would be just fun to teach people who haven't done it at all. It's very, very fun to be honest. It's just pretty time consuming and a lot of work and effort, but it is always super rewarding. So let's go. The first thing you're going to want to do is draw a sketch. You have to have a sketch beforehand. Even if you're not used to having a sketch, it's just, it makes it way easier. And I can't even imagine doing it without one. So luckily I already have one. This is a sketch that I have. It's that old character named Reese. Um, I made a speed paint designing him. If you don't remember, it depends. And so I thought it would be fun to draw him. The sketch doesn't have to be super clean, but I can guarantee you that it makes it 100 times easier if it is. You are gonna use the sketch as a guide for the shapes that you're gonna draw. What you're gonna do is you're either gonna change the layer settings to multiply, or you're just gonna lower the opacity. I choose to lower the opacity just cause it's a lot easier for me. And you're gonna lock that layer cause you do not wanna accidentally draw on that. And then you're gonna create a layer underneath the sketch. All of your colors are usually gonna be underneath the sketch because you're gonna wanna continue to see the sketch throughout working on it. And then you're gonna pick some colors and start drawing shapes. So I forgot his skin color to be honest. I need to look up a reference where did I save a reference? <laughs> I don't think I saved a reference. Uh-oh. Oh, All right, so I found a Reese. <laughs> and then you say I found a reference of Reese, but uh, that works too. So what you're gonna do underneath the sketch layer is you're gonna wanna draw some shapes. Pretty much just outline that sketch in the color. Um, the color that you choose doesn't actually have to be the canon color but I don't know if that's the correct term. It doesn't have to be like the correct color of the skin. So let's say I wanted to, if the skin color was something like harder to see against the background, like let's say he was super light skinned and I was doing this. If you know that is straining on my eyes or your eyes, you are always free to just choose just like a crazy color and then later on just change it. Um, I'll do it right now just cause I wanna show because you think it's easy for some people to understand, but sometimes it's not, and it's okay, because we all learn differently. All right, so I'm finished outlining the face and the ears. I'm gonna undo that sketch layer, and this is what it looks like. You can see some shape of the hair, but we're not gonna worry about the hair right now, we're just doing the skin. So either using the bucket tool or the wand tool, you know, everybody colors differently. Just fill that in. It's okay if it's a little messy, we're gonna fix everything in post. Honestly, um, cleaning up, Afterwards is one of my favorite things to do because it's cool to see something from oops. What am I using? That is not the right tool Seeing something from a rough sketch to being cleaned up and being the official thing I don't know. It's just really satisfying. So I outlined the face and the ears I didn't do the neck for one reason and you'll see why later But after I used blue because let's pretend that his skin color wasn't uh, Wasn't easy to look at or whatever. I am gonna lock the pixels or lock the whatever it's called do this and that or you can also use um, the changing hue st saturation tool that most programs have but I just like doing it like this because it's more fun that way now I'm gonna do his neck I'm gonna make his neck a different color just so that it's easier to differentiate is that the word from the face so I'm gonna do another layer and I'm gonna put that one underneath it just so that it makes it easier. I'm gonna do like a slightly darker, more saturated tone and or hue. I don't, I forget some words sometimes. It's a really tiny pen. Then I'm just gonna outline the neck, get the shoulders kind of in there. 
And there we go. And then I have the neck. Um, the reason why I do it like this is if it's all the same color, like this, you know, you won't be able to see the chin. You can, however, do a limited line work and just outline the face. But I just prefer to have it like this. It's not a law that you have to do it like this. Um, it all depends on your style. I've seen a lot of people do it the other way when it all matches. But just for me, I like I just like how this looks a lot. And that's one of my favorite things about lineless work is that you have so many stylistic choices and different artists do lineless work differently and they, I don't know, it's just really fun. And another thing that I really like about lineless work is that it really makes you concentrate or pay more attention on shapes because you want to try to keep the shapes kind of simple at least. Um, so it really just makes you group everything into just blocky shapes. You're gonna wanna try to correctly convey what you're going for without relying on line art. So you gotta do that with shapes and it's really cool and it's kind of like a challenge and it's so fun though. That's so fun. Another thing I wanna tell you or point out before I go too far into this, because I consider this to be very, very important, is to use a different layer for every different color. It makes it way easier um, if you ever want to change the color of something or if you accidentally like run the colors together and you want to erase it easier. Just yeah, oops, that is way bigger than I remember. So seriously, just a different layer for each one. Feel free to name the layers. I am too lazy. So I'm just going to do it like this. But seriously, layers are your best friends for this. And um, yeah. Another challenge for this, or another thing that I find difficult about lineless work is putting the layers in an order that makes it easier. So usually for hair, I do like to put that on top of everything else and then I just erase anything that overlaps with the skin. Um, I do it like this because I just always end up drawing hair like that, so yeah. So I'm gonna just skip forward until I have pretty much everything into shapes and then I'll meet you guys back here. All right, so I have finished with, oops, I hope I didn't change anything there. I have finished with all of the basic shapes. So if I took out the sketch layer, ta-da, all this cool stuff. It kind of reminds me of those old iTunes uh, ads, Apple ads, whatever. So as you can see, it's not cleaned up at all. There's just a lot of awkward parts, a lot of blank pixels and a lot of overlapping that just doesn't make sense um, but I just haven't cleaned it up yet and I did want to keep this in just so that I can show you how I usually go about these things because I didn't want to put the hood over everything just because it'd be too much to erase so I figured that just erasing this part would be a lot easier than erasing the hood from the face and the neck and the everything else so for that all I have to do is just zoom in right there lower the opacity and notice all the places that it's overlapping and then just go using the eraser, which I have right here actually. Just erase all of this. And it's just way easier like that. This is not clean at all, whoops. And there's still some mistakes to be made, but it's just easier for me that way. All right, so the best thing to do after all of this is to clean it up, but to be honest, I'm kind of lazy. Like I don't wanna clean up that much. I'm just gonna do this part right here. That's pretty much it. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go over with some finer details as in um, the minimal line art for like the face and maybe some for the hair. To be honest, with hair, I like to put way more detail than this. As you can, ah, I'm gonna have to open this again. As you can see with uh, this one, for the hair, I would like to separate the hair into parts and then do different colors like that. Um, which is totally not necessary at all. But for this one, I'm just gonna keep it way more simple with just one solid color. And it is up to you whether you wanna do more colors for the hair or for the skin or the clothes or whatever you want. Um, I just really like how simple this art style can be, like a lot. I'm going to put the face, I don't know if I should put it above the hair or not. I'm gonna put it above the hair just so that it makes it a little easier. I like to stay away from the color black for line art unless it's like a really dark gray or something. Um, I just like to go for other colors such as, you see I use red here, um, and then for the clothes I just use our darker blue or use the same color as a collar, just to limit the amount of colors. Um, so I'm just gonna go, let's see. 
maybe like this and I can change the color later. So this is where I start to use minimal line art just to get the face. And he's slowly starting to come together. I am so close just to finishing this video just because my tablet is getting super testy right now. But as you can see, I did the line art over the skin and over the eyes just so that I can figure out whether um, I want the line art to go over the, uh, the hair or not. Um, for the eyebrows, I usually do it over the hair just because I like being able to portray certain emotions and stuff like that. But for the line art, who knows? So for Lina's art, you know how I said I try to avoid black. I do like to use um, darker blues or greens for eyes just because, I don't know, I just, I mean, it looks fine just like this, but for some reason, I just really, really prefer eyes being a darker color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with this. Let's just do like a, since it's, yeah, he's more of a blue dude, he's gonna do this and like that kind of stuff. You could also use like gradient stuff, so it doesn't really freaking matter, honestly. Like, who cares? It's all about style. It's all about what you want. Do what you like. Do what you think looks best. You know, it's just, it's just, art is fun that way. Oops, what happened there? I don't know. Then you just fill these in and then layer underneath the line art. I really gotta clean this up though. Look at that. That is just, gosh dang, travesty, dude. Just a Worst of travel, it's just the worst. Why is this eye bigger than the other one? God, who knows? Before I end the video, I'm just gonna give him some pupils just cause he looks like a freaking creep without it. I mean, if you have OCs like that, good on you. I mean, uh, oops, wrong one. I mean, you know, inclusion and all that, but God, I just need him to have a little bit of eyeballs. So I'm just gonna freaking just, let's do it like this. Let's do it. Stop tablet, my tablet is having some weird like, kind of having anxiety right now. I don't know what's going on. It's never done this before, baby, but you know, there we go. Do that. Look at that. Oh my God, look at my little demon baby. He looks so freaking beautiful. I love him. Why do I never draw him? I'm such a horrible mother, but God, he's just so gosh dang gorgeous. So I'm gonna end this video just like this. Um, it's, it's really easy. It, it really, well, that's weird to say. It's easy in a way that you don't have to pay too much attention to details. This really challenges what you can do with just the simple shapes and, and just solid colors. But you know, it's that is just a challenge. It really is. And you can do a lot. Like, look at this. It's just so simple and yet so beautiful. Thank you for watching. I really hope this was at least a little bit helpful. And I hope that to those of you who haven't tried this kind of art style before, I really hope that you do. And if you do, feel free to tag me on Twitter or Tumblr or Instagram with your finished piece. Um, do your best. And, and you know, I just, I want to see you guys try different things because I sure as heck don't. So be better than me, please. Thank you. Have a good week. And um, be good outlets for me. I really need to work on my outro because it's just all over the place. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Love you.